call the special meeting of the Common Council to order. Madam City uh, Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Aye. Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Groff? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? <coughs> Excuse? Oh, 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 there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 16 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Kittleson, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Before we follow through with the agenda, I'd just like to make a quick uh, notation for you. There's a letter in, on your desk that's being addressed to Mr. Emery from Great Wolves uh, asking for a meeting. There's an article coming out in the paper tomorrow about that and it refers to uh, their 205 re uh, report of earnings or loss. Okay, first item on the agenda and the only item on the agenda, 2277, an RO by the city attorney submitting a communication being an opinion from the League of Municipalities regarding the library director's employment contract as requested by the Common Council. It, as you will recall, uh, several weeks ago, the alderman asked Attorney McLean to solicit and seek a, an opinion from the League of Municipalities. And he did that, and the, the opinion is in. Uh, I believe every one of you has had a copy and a chance to re read it. I've called a special meeting to have Attorney McLean uh, talk to you about that opinion and give you an opportunity to ask questions and, and so forth. So, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, I made some extra copies. If anybody didn't bring theirs along, I, I've got like eight extra copies. Is there anyone that need a, needs a copy? Okay. You guys always surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also handed out kind of to complete your packets of information on this subject, the letter that I had drafted and sent to the league, which they responded to, uh, as well as the copy of the opinion that the, the library had gotten from the Department of Public Instruction uh, regarding their opinion on the library board's ability to contract for the uh, term of employment with the library director. Um, the opinion for, of the league is that, you know, in response to the first question I had asked whether or not the library board had a, the authority to enter an employment contract for a five-year term, they answered that no. And um, the basis for that is uh, their opinion that the authority of library boards is strictly statutory, uh, unlike the city itself, uh, which is subject to, has home rule authority, meaning uh, we've got very broad authority subject to limitations by the state. A lot of other uh, entities, statutory entities, uh, have statutory authority, which means that they've got the powers and only the powers that the legislature gives them. Uh, that's, true of the, that's true of counties, for instance. Counties are uh, instrumentalities of the state. Uh, you look in the statutes under counties, there are a list of, I don't know, 60 some odd enumerated authorities that counties have. They don't have home rule authority like cities that can uh, legislate in any area unless the state says you can't. They're uh, limited to what the state says they can do. Uh, anyway, the league is basically saying here that to start out that a library board uh, is constricted by their statutory authority and doesn't have broader authority than that. And the, basically the authority that's in the statute 4358 is that the uh, library board uh, can appoint a, a librarian and 
the librarian then appoints uh, other employees and uh, sets the compensation and the duties. Uh, that's all it says. Now the Attorney General issued an opinion, and that's cited on the second page, back in 1988, that concluded that uh, library boards had implied contract authority. And that the Attorney General got from another section of the library statute that talked about the library board having exclusive control of the expenditure of all monies collected, donated, or appropriated for the library fund. Uh, it's interesting to note that that opinion that the Attorney General issued in 88 was in, in response to a request for an opinion from uh, Dr. Herbert Grover, who at the time was the uh, superintendent of the Department of Public Instruction. And uh, I'll get to that in a minute as far as uh, a request for a legal opinion uh, by the council. Uh, so the league is basically saying the library board's authority is limited to what's in the statute. The statute talks about hiring and compensation and setting the duties, does not speak of terms and conditions of employment. Uh, it cites this uh, state ex rel Wattawa versus Manitowoc Library Board case from 1949. And uh, I had noted that case also in my letter to them. Uh, I thought potentially that case might be distinguishable from this situation, but the league is basically saying that that case uh, pretty much is on point, standing for the proposition that uh, a library board can't grant tenure to an employee of the library. Um, can only, uh, because it's not statutorily set forth in the powers enumerated to library boards. Um, that Manitowoc case didn't deal with an employment contract. It dealt with uh, a 25-year term librarian in Manitowoc uh, who was terminated by the library board there. And uh, the individual argued, sued the library board, saying that uh, because the library board had adopted some codes of ethics of the American Public Library Association that included in there was uh, some reference to tenure, and therefore that uh, she had tenure rights that uh, in, in effect gave her uh, more rights than just employment at will that where she could be terminated for uh, any cause or no cause. The court uh, went to the state Supreme Court. The state Supreme Court concluded that uh, the library board could not grant her tenure if, even if it was arguable that this, uh, by adoption of these uh, ethics code of the American Public Library Association, that there had been any tenure included in that. Um, and they couldn't do that on the basis that there wasn't statutory authority giving the library board that authority. Um, how I thought potentially, and it's, it's in my letter to the league, that that might be distinguishable from our case was in that the, uh, the library contract that's in question uh, was for a term, but also had provision for uh, termination without cause, which is basically at will. Um, but the problem is the, the at will language is uh, modified by the fact that if um, the Swinkle was terminated without cause, there was a substantial financial penalty associated with that, that uh, she was entitled under the contract to uh, exercise a right to a lump sum buyout of the balance of the contract. The League is basically saying that uh, limitation in effect overrides the employment at will and negates the fact that it's employment at will and the library board can't do that. Um, the, the court cites another case, this, uh, or excuse me, the League's opinion cites another case, this Adamchik case versus uh, Caledonia, 
that was a more recent case from 1971. It didn't involve libraries. It involved a town uh, employee, I think a police officer that was hired by a township. And once again, in that case, the, the court discussed that a township, again, unlike a city, uh, operates under statutory authority, designated statutory authority that's spelled out in the statute as to what authority a town has. Uh, and that the town could not exceed that authority by uh, arguably entering into a contract with this police officer to give them a, a term contract. Um, so that, that dealt with you know, a town <coughs> board issue, um, but it's also in effect uh, saying that the, the governing body there, in that case the town, which is uh, uh, subject to statutory authority, could not go beyond that authority. It didn't have the power to do that. Um, that's really the basis that the League is relying upon to conclude that the uh, library board in this case doesn't have the authority to enter into a term contract. Um, also addresses the uh, city's obligation to cover the lump sum commitment under the contract in the event that uh, <coughs> Uh, that were to happen and the library board didn't have sufficient funds to pay it. Uh, the league indicates that in their opinion uh, only the city council is vested with the authority over city finances and that authority is not shared with the library board. And the library board would have no authority to compel additional financial contributions uh, to the library to satisfy any financial commitments that the library board might have made which exceeded its available funds. And further, it cites another case to the effect that the library director would not be able either to make a claim against the city that it's entitled, or that she's entitled to uh, payment from the city coffers because the library board couldn't bind the city uh, on that contract because the city's not a party. Um, the, it is noted in the opinion, I think it's the case that uh, there is a severability clause in the contract and that um, there are some provisions in the contract that could be severed, uh, removed from the contract, such as the five-year term, such as the lump sum buyout, such as the uh, provisions, extraordinary provisions for termination with cause and without cause uh, and still have something left that would be within the library board's authority, such as the, the statement in there of the uh, compensation, amount of compensation and the uh, references to the benefits to which uh, Sharon would be eligible. Um, so. Their, in their opinion, the entire contract wouldn't necessarily be invalidated, but uh, you know, a great bulk of it would be the the uh, the primary uh, factor behind it. The the uh, term of the agreement would be invalidated. Um, as I said, the uh, the Department of Public Instruction had issued a rather cursory one-page opinion, citing that attorney general's opinion um, and kind of making the, the leap of faith there that if uh, a library board has implied authority to contract, it can therefore enter into an employment contract for a term of years. Um, but right now, I guess we're faced with, we've got opinions from uh, what I would conser, uh, consider uh, you know, reputable sources, the Department of Public Instruction of the state and the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, which is not, you know, uh, doesn't carry any legal authority. That's, that's a, uh, basically a lobbying organization for cities and villages, but uh, it's pretty well respected throughout the state uh, for their opinions. 
Um, the issue is, I guess, what to do at this point. Uh, but before we get to that, I guess I'll see if anybody has any questions about the league's <coughs> opinion. Alderman, Alderman, Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The letter you wrote, and then when they respond with the three questions, uh, the first is, does the Municipal Library Board have the authority to enter into an employment contract? The next one deals with the um, lump sum payout and stuff. Am I correct that really after the meetings that took place and the renegotiations, two and three are kind of moot points as far as we're right now? I mean, really we're just um, on the hook for one? I mean, because didn't they get rid of the lump sum payouts and no, all that? Those? No, those weren't, uh, those weren't, weren't moved. The, the term of the contract was shortened. Right, and I thought they would just, it was agreed that, that she would get what any other department had got, to, you know, sick leave and stuff like that or whatever. Uh, she was still entitled to the lump sum if she was terminated without cause. Well, I guess I'm confused. Originally, I was under the assumption she was getting something if she got fired with or, with or without cause, actually, that all the other department heads didn't get. And I thought after the negotiation took place, whatever she got when she left with or without cause would be similar to what any other department head would get with or without cause. Well, yeah, I think that's, that's accurate. But uh, the, the termination without cause, uh, as I think I explained once to the council, uh, with department heads currently there are under the ordinance terms for department heads, five year terms, that provide for termination with cause. And if a department head was terminated without cause, uh, it'd be my belief that they would have, could have potentially, a claim against the city for compensation for the balance of the term if they were terminated without cause because the ordinance talks about termination with cause. And that, that would be consistent with what uh, is in the is in the contract for Ms. Winkle. Okay, my other question was in the DPI, it talks about the appointing of a librarian. Did we go through the process? Did they appoint her like the first time she got hired and that was it forever? Did they actually appoint one every year? Do you know? No, that's a one-time appointment. But okay. uh, the opinion is that that appointment is at the pleasure of the library board. The, the right. board has the authority to appoint, which implies the authority to terminate as well. And uh, absent anything else, has the right to terminate without cause at, at pleasure, period. Okay, but didn't we, I uh, think it was uh, Tom Holton, we just, didn't we just appoint him? But is that because we appoint him and it's, it's, it says five years that it's right. different? That it's, we're talking about different authorities. Right, I understand that. Uh, the library board's authority, as I said, is set forth in the statute that just talks about appointment. Doesn't talk about appointment and compensation. Doesn't talk about terms and conditions. And the league is saying that uh, the library board can't set the terms and conditions. Okay, thank you. Vice President Berg. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Your Honor. Uh, I guess following up on that line of logic, a contract is presumptive an agreement between one or more parties. A, uh, uh, is it, would it be within the library board's authority to uh, appoint for a period of time, similar to department heads, and to furthermore, then as part of that appointment, essentially have the same language that they have in contract, which would then be unilateral. In other words, we appoint you with the, the following caveats and conditions and not have that as a negotiated contract, but basically as part of their inherent powers. I believe the League is saying no, they could okay. not do that. So Their authority you. is to appoint and they can't, uh, by agreement or whatever, uh, take away their right to terminate at will. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Following up on that just a, a little bit, could the city still, or if they so chose, could they 
do what Sharon has been saying, she's wanted all the time parity with, with all the other departments in, this, in the city, so could the, the city and, or the mayor appoint her for a five-year term like he does any other department head approved by the council for that same period of time? Uh, it's a good question, Alderman Graf, and I, I called and talked to the league about that this morning. Their opinion is no, because the library board and not the council has the authority to hire and fire, and so the council could not set a term of five years and abrogate the library board's authority to terminate at will. So uh, it, it places uh, the library employees in a sort of a different status than uh, other city employees, which, um, you know, the league's response to that is, well, that's what all the authority that the statute provides, and that's all you can give them. You should know also that the library board meets tomorrow, and in in that this particular opinion is on their agenda for discussion. <coughs> As it stands now, it, it's a, the attorney McLean has explained, we have an opinion saying, <coughs> yes, it's okay, and we have another opinion saying, no, it's not okay. And that's where we stand now. Now, as far as we go, where we go from here, um, I've looked at it and I see that there are three options. I think, let me just have Alderman Susha first oh, before we go. Thank you, Stern McLean. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I was going to ask City Attorney McLean where we go from here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> okay, very good. Where do we go? What, what are uh, our options here? <clears throat> the first option, and I don't know that it's, it's a viable option, is really to do nothing and maintain the status quo. Uh, however, in light of the league opinion that the council requested, I don't think that that's really an option, but that's, you know, a possibility. I think the second option would be to request an opinion from the attorney general. I, I think Alderman Susha had, had uh, suggested that at the council meeting where we talked about getting the opinion from the league. Um, I discouraged that at the time. Uh, but I think now may be the time that it's ripe to do that in that we've got basically conflicting opinions. Um, yes, Attorney, let me just say something there that I was informed today <clears throat> by a member of the Taxpayers Alliance that they have requested an Attorney General's opinion on the validity of the contract and that request has been at the Attorney General's office for the last, I believe, two weeks. So just so you know that somebody has already made an effort to, to secure an opinion of, by the Attorney General to, to de determine whether this contract is valid or not. Uh, I'll say the, the follow up on that, I wasn't aware of that, Mayor, but uh, typically the Attorney General does not provide opinions <clears throat> to cities and villages. Uh, it does not provide opinions to citizens, typically, uh, unless the major exception to that is in open records type cases. They're, they're very active on writing opinions on open records and open meeting law issues. Um, the Attorney General generally provides opinions to state entities and state instrumentalities. It will provide opinions to state agencies such as the Department of Public Instruction. As I said, the opinion that's cited in the League's opinion from the Attorney General uh, was at the request of the Department of Public Instruction. Um, so the city itself, we could make a request, but generally the <coughs> Attorney General won't honor a request from a, a municipality. The city, as I said before, is not an instrumentality of the state as opposed to counties and townships are. Uh, um, what I, so anyway, that, that is an option. If chose that option, what I would suggest is that hopefully, uh, I'll be meeting with the library board tomorrow, is that hopefully that could be a joint request from, by the council and the library board to the Department of Public Instruction for the Department of Public Instruction to request an opinion from the Attorney General. Uh, I think if it was done in that manner, um, 
the, it'd be more likely that the Attorney General would uh, issue an opinion in that, uh, with a request coming in that way uh, than it would otherwise. Uh, the last couple of Attorney Generals have been reluctant to issue formal opinions. They, they've written a lot of uh, informal letter opinions and they might even do that in this case, but they haven't issued too many uh, formal opinions. But as I uh, as was indicated, they did address the issue of library board contract authority back in 88, and they may view this as an opportune time to sort of revisit that and flesh, flesh out that issue as it relates to employment contracts. Uh, I would say the advantages uh, to, doing, to doing that, to requesting an opinion from the AG's office would be that it, it uh, wouldn't be costly, it wouldn't be hopefully uh, real time consuming. Uh, now, while the Attorney General's opinion would not be binding on the parties either, it would certainly be a pretty persuasive uh, authoritative source. Courts do give uh, persuasive authority or, or persuasive weight to Attorney General's opinion. They're, they're not bound by him either, but the, uh, it would, I think, potentially the, all the parties could look at an opinion from the uh, State Attorney General and say, basically, this, this is the law. Uh, it wouldn't prevent anybody from going further and suing, but uh, I think it may not be necessary to do that if we get an opinion from the Attorney General. Uh, as I said, the disadvantage is it's not binding on the parties. It's just discretionary on the Attorney General's part uh, as to whether they'll issue an opinion. Although I think their discretion gets reduced when it's the state agency, if it's the Department of Public Instruction requesting it, uh, I'm not sure what their discretionary role is there if they have to give an opinion or if they still got some discretion, but uh, be a lot more likely that they would issue an opinion in that manner. Um, the, the, the third option, the second viable option, really would be, in my view, would be to initiate a, uh, what's called a declaratory judgment action, uh, which is a lawsuit filed um, asking, basically raising the issue, uh, that it's a legal issue, and asking a judge to make a decision as to what the law is, what the statute means. Um, the, uh, the advantage to that is it's binding upon the parties to the suit. The parties would need to be uh, the city, the library board, and the Swinkle. Uh, the disadvantages there are it would be more costly, it's going to be more time consuming, uh, it would involve uh, obtaining outside counsel for the library board uh, so that they would have representation um, and it would also potentially be more more uh, contentious because, like it or not, even though it, it sounds like it's, you know, everybody's kind of in agreement and we're asking the, a judge to make a decision on a point of law, uh, any sort of lawsuit becomes adversarial and each party takes a different position. Uh, and it, even once a judge rules, it's still subject to appeal. So still not be the final say. Uh, so I guess I'm suggesting a uh, kind of a measured approach to see if we can get an attorney general's opinion and to see if, if we do, if that would resolve the issue short of taking the next step, if you will, which would be a declaratory judgment action. Certainly getting the opinion, uh, whether we got it or not, uh, asking for it, wouldn't preclude going to court eventually, but um, 
maybe we can avoid that. I, it's analogous, in, in my view, to seeking mediation or arbitration as opposed to going to court. It's, it's a way to hopefully get a third party to take a look at it uh, and uh, get the parties to agree that, yeah, that's, that's the law without having to uh, get more involved. We've got some questions here. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> when Mrs. Winkle was hired what, 15 years ago, was there any time limit or term or anything set at that time? No. So 15 years has gone by, floating along, everything hunky-dory. Why in the world, all of a sudden, there has to be a contract and uh, money that's going to be paid out in, in case she gets uh, fired for no cause or what cause. What in the world happened what, that brought this all about that puts everybody in an uproar? This council, the city, you know, outside lawyers being brought in, it just doesn't make sense that for 15 years everything goes along supposedly fine and now all of a sudden contracts and everything else. Uh, Alderman Berg, I don't know if I know what you're asking, but I don't know that it's relevant at this point. And you know, really have to ask Ms. Winkle. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we can go back and say, you know, why is she requesting it? You know, she did request it. The library board entered into it, and now we're in this situation. I may add that although it's not an option, it could be an occurrence. If Ms. Winkle should decide to rescind the contract, then that would deal with the issue. But that's her choice right. to make, okay? All, Vice President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. You spoke uh, with some uncertainty uh, regarding the Attorney General's consideration of uh, uh, DPI requests. Would it uh, increase the probability of consideration were we to ask the county to join with us in as much as there are county dollars that also go in to support the library? Would that balance, if you would, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, request? Uh, potentially Alderman Berg, but I don't know. I think that would actually delay the, delay it more. True. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think they would have a tendency to beg off on, on the basis that really the county is not directly involved. Okay. Thank they you. Look at it as more of a city <coughs> issue. Alderman Retke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if I'm reading this correctly, the uh, library board, if they should choose to dismiss, dismiss Ms. Winkle with no cause, and it would have to pay on this lump sum, that would come out of their budget, would it not? Okay. It would have to come out of their budget, would that's, it not? Yeah, that's what the, uh, the league is, is, is saying, yes. And you're saying we could look at the Department of Public Instruction, but we could be sitting in a stalemate as well. I'm sorry? You're, you're saying if we go to the Department of Public Instruction, we could end up with a stalemate as well if they come back with an opposing opinion, like we have here in this, this simple document that was passed out actually at the library board meeting, which I read up front. Is that correct? Um, I'm not following you, Alderman. Well, if, if the Department of Public Instruction comes back and, and they do get a, the Attorney General's opinion for us, and it's, it comes back the same way this one comes back, then we're at a stalemate once again, well, correct? That's I would be very surprised if the Attorney General would write a, write a half-page opinion. Well, I'm saying, but I'm saying if it comes back agreeing with this half-page opinion. Well, if they agree with that, then so be it. I guess the problem I have in my mind is we have a, a library director who's been here for 15 years and everything was running correctly, and all of a sudden something happened, and these people supposedly love this library, but it's a future library board for some reason decides to tie into getting rid of Miss Winkle, this could affect the services of the Mead Public Library. Am I following? Is this correct? I mean, with the budgetary and everything else, they're going to have to come up with the money to do it, to pay her off, correct? Right. If the city's not on the hook for any of it, according to this from the League of Municipalities. Right. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm, I'm thinking of a fourth option here. Um, I guess first I need clarification because um, Sharon Winkle, she has the option of rescinding her contract, but I, I thought I was under the impression that the library, library board approves her contract. They're the ones that put it into effect. So they could, uh, could they not 
rescind that decision would be number one. I guess speaking of a fourth option is just courtesy to see if they would reconsider their decision. Now that we have this information, maybe they're willing to take out those provisions tomorrow and start there and then proceed further. Um, I didn't catch everything you said at the end there, but I, I got, I, I am meeting with the library board tomorrow at their meeting and I'm going to discuss this also and, uh, you know, I guess I don't know that they could unilaterally terminate the contract. Uh, they, they certainly could, but then you've got the issue that Ms. Winkle could call out a breach of contract <coughs> and, uh, you know, seek the lump sum payout that, that's in there. And you still have the issue as to whether it's valid or not. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, a question for Attorney McLean. What's the time frame uh, in which we'd have such a decision? Uh, from the Attorney General? Yep. I'm sorry, Alderman Manny, I, I don't know. I don't know how long it would take. Uh, I do know you know, we requested an opinion a number of years ago on a, an issue of statewide concern dealing with the location of community-based residential facilities, spacing provisions. There was a, a statute that says uh, you can't locate them within, within 1,200 feet of one another, I believe. And there was a series of federal cases under the Federal Fair Housing and Amendments Act that said that those sorts of provisions were unlawful under federal law. And we asked for an attorney general's opinion on whether the state provision was valid and they did give us an opinion on that. And it, <clears throat> my recollection is it did not take a real long time. You know, I'm thinking 30 days. But Thank you. <clears throat> that goes back probably 12 years ago, so. <laughs> Thank you. Then a comment or two. Uh, just to put in context, I think we need to move ahead and not at this point look at what's been or what we might have been able to do better. You know I voted against the contract originally as I sit on the board uh, and I say very clearly um, the board's intent was not to load, overload. The intent of the board was to find some sense of parity. Now in fact in the real world as McLean had suggested to us there is some semblance of parity. It's closer than it was originally with the first contract. Now, in fact, if we would let Tom Holton go, for instance, without cause, he could and would sue the city and he would win if it was without cause in that five-year term. So we as a city would pay. <coughs> if the board uh, dismissed Ms. Winkle without cause, she would contractually have those dollars. The board would pay. Service would be cut, obviously, to come up with those dollars. So there is a semblance of parity, but it's not on a par legally. It's a different methodology to get to the same end. So I want to be clear about that. And just to reiterate as well, there's, in my mind, there's no chance she will be released without cause. It has to be a unanimous vote. So long as I'm in this seat, so long as any other alderman is sitting on that, on that board, and there will be always one appointed by the mayor each year, I can't imagine such a vote ever occurring. It's inconceivable, not to mention the members of the board itself. So it's an overprotection that's, in my mind, a legal fallacy because it has no possibility of ever happening in the real world. So we need to move ahead. The board is, uh, in my mind, as I read the board at this time, not at all looking for conflict, wanting to move ahead with their work. Uh, I think they'll be happy to deal with whatever the Attorney General says to honor that perspective and to move ahead. And that's where we all benefit. Thank you. I, I was one of the, the, the persons who, who wanted to move ahead. But in, <coughs> This opinion changes things dramatically. It puts an additional responsibility on us that, that uh, we need to be careful how we address. <clears throat> Alderman uh, Serta's fourth option, proposed fourth option, in my mind is probably the first step we should be taking and just simply ask, would you be willing to rescind the stipulation of the contract by mutual consent? 
If the answer is no, then we know, we know where to go. But although it's a fourth uh, option, I think it's a first step that we, as, as reasonable people, should take and simply ask. And we'll, we'll be told yes or no. And that question can be, can be <clears throat> put forth tonight and, and, and uh, put, present it to them tomorrow, and then we'll have a response. And then we know what we should do. We have President Grau. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> City Attorney, you, you mentioned that you'd be attending the meeting tomorrow night, and you're attending that meeting as um, the city's representative, uh, or as um, as the library board's attorney, or how are you attending that meeting? Uh, <laughs> that is a good question. Uh, basically, as a city representative, yes, sir. Uh, we. You know, in the past, I had attended. In my role as city attorney, I represent not only the city council but also the boards and commissions and so forth. And so I attended as representing the library board at prior meetings. But uh, knowing that there's a potential conflict here, I'd be representing the city. Thank you. Then, as a representative of the city, you would be um, bringing forth any motion that we may. Be making this evening to present to the to the library board. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. Okay. With that being said, then I would move, Your Honor, that um, we would present the library board with Alderman Serta's suggestion of asking um, if she would um, remove those clauses um, uh, from from her contract or, or tear it up or whatever needs to be done, and then at the same time also direct the city attorney that if the answer is no, then um, to um, to work on getting um, the Attorney General's opinion um, if the answer to the first question is no. Second. There's a motion and a second to request uh, the Library Board to consider, not the Library Board, to have Ms. Winkle consider rescinding either the entire contract or those portions of the contract that are, that are being regarded as invalid now. And there's a second. Any discussion on that? We have Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess I can't support this, and, and part of it goes back to the a couple people mentioned everything was fine for 15 years. Why? What caused this? What caused this was she didn't feel there was parity with the other department heads, and, and over a period of time, they were trying to find a solution, and this is the solution they came up with. Okay, maybe it wasn't the best idea, but if I was in her shoes tomorrow and you asked me, will you rescind it? I'd say, sure. What are you going to do to get me towards my parity? And I haven't heard a solution to that yet. You know, I don't know that there is one that we can do only, you know, what we talked about earlier, we can only do so much, the library board can do so much, but I guess if we go with that question, we should have an answer to her of how we're going to achieve parity so she's treated fairly with the other department heads. Mm -hmm. And I haven't heard that answer yet, or, or how we can accomplish that. And her, without that, I, I can't imagine she'd want to say, yeah, I'll rescind it until she knows there's a possibility so she could be an equal person. And I don't know how I don't know how she feels. Uh, we're human beings; we can change our minds. One factor can cause us to go in one direction. This may be the factor. I don't know, uh, but it, I think that Alderman Sarah's recommendation is a good one because it takes an initial step to simply ask, and if the answer is no, then we need we we know where to go. But with respect to putting order in parity with everybody else. After it all is settled, it's still not our job. The library board has to do that. She is the employee of the library board, not us. So that's not an issue that we should be really concerning ourselves with, other than we can convey our feelings to Alderman Manny, who is the automatic representative to that library board. We have next Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I can't support this myself either. She's had her chance over the last almost two months to rip up that contract, make things right. This is just another stall tactic to give, you know, just keep dragging this thing out and out and out. It's time we put this thing to rest and go out and get an opinion one way or the other and just put it to bed. Sending it back to the library board again, it's not our job once we find out, you know, if she's going to tear it up, what kind of parity. That's not our job. Our job is to see to it that that contract is either ruled legal or, Ill or illegal, and that's it. We're out of it. I mean, that's, that's what we're here to do tonight. I think we should just go get that opinion so I can uh, support this okay. motion. And the opinion will be asked for if her answer is no. And that's all we're saying is that as rational people, reasonable people, it doesn't hurt to simply ask 
and let her tell you yes or let her tell you no. And whatever the answer is, we know where to go. That rhymes. Sounds like a poem. <laughs> Alderman Manny here next. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to reinforce what Alderman Stefan uh, really pointed out, and that is if we go ahead and ask this, and if she said yes, she will uh, rescind the contract and forego her legal rights. Um, in essence, she's left in, in limbo because of the law. We can't draft an ordinance that would give her a five-year term to have parity with our department heads. That was my first thought as this conversation was going. Maybe that would be a way to go. Legally, if we drafted such an ordinance, that would have no legal standing in the state. So she has no rights, which means the issue is the state legislation. If that's too restricted, too constricted, that has to be addressed if, the fa if the, in fact, uh, an issue of, uh, of uh, security is an issue across the state for library board directors. So that's one area of recourse. It's not an immediate one, but it looks like that might be an issue to look at. Just a point of clarification, Alderman Maddie, she would not be left in limbo. She would be put back to where she was before, where she worked 15 years already. So she, she'd be back to the position she was under the same terms and conditions, or lack of, that she was already working for the last 15 years. So there's nothing going to be taken away from her uh, should she be willing to do that. We got lots of lights here. Alderman Meyer. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I believe in communication, and I think that's been the whole problem that we've had here with the library board has been a lack of communication. And I guess my question is, why couldn't Ms. Winkle have had a term? Could not the bylaws of the library board have changed to have offered her a four or five year term? And we would avoid all these problems. Uh, well, the league legal opinion is saying no. can't. The library board can't set a term, whether it's in their bylaws or whether, it, or whether the city adopts an ordinance, that it, it's not in the cards. And that, that's why it may be helpful to get something from the attorney general. Maybe they've got a different take on that and uh, see it different. Uh, and I uh, personally, I, you know, I've dealt with the attorneys at the league for a long time, respect them. but. Uh, you know, their, their opinions don't carry the weight of an attorney general's opinion. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. You've answered lots of questions tonight. I understand very clearly, as you explained, the, um, this information that we received. So I thank you for that. And um, Mayor Perez, thank you so much for reiterating that lots of things have to do with the library board. And I think slowly, step by step, we should act, but not be reactionary. And I think the idea of talking to the library board tomorrow, because it is their venue, it is their call, asking the question, and then perhaps asking the opinion if we need to. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think that I'm going to have to agree with Alderman Radke on this. I think what he was saying is that by having a declaratory judgment, we would have something that would be enforceable. If we take the time and get an opinion from the Attorney General, it's just another opinion. And there's no guarantee that Ms. Winkle will, guarantee, will agree to tear up her contract after that ruling comes in. Perhaps the Library Board might agree that they might want to tear it up, but it's my understanding that both parties would have to agree to tear it up or perhaps um, Attorney McLean can answer if Ms. Winkle wants to eliminate her contract, she can do that without the board approval. Isn't that true? Um, well, the, it's really a two-party contract would, would require consent of the library board as well, but I don't see why they would not agree to that. Okay. So I guess that kind of brings me to the next question as well, is that if we initiated a declaratory judgment, um, it really boils down to Ms. Winkle agreeing to do it. Um, because like you said, if, if she agrees, the library board would, would support it as well. So I'm, I'm thinking that you don't want to go into a, a court situation where you have the taxpayer dollars paying for a city attorney, then you have taxpayer dollars paying for a library board to have a t an attorney present. I would rather see just the city go to court with Ms. Winkle and she can pay for her own private attorney to fight the case for her because she's the one that ultimately is benefiting financially here. 
mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, and then my third point is that um, if there's some concern here about parity, uh, as far as if we can't give her the five-year term like other department heads have, then maybe it's time that we consider um, going to all uh, employment at will with all of our department heads and get rid of the five-year terms with the rest of them. Because if, if what I'm hearing here tonight is true, that our hands are tied, um, if, we, if we have a five-year term and we decide to adjust the table of organization and eliminate one of the department heads, if we merge two departments together, am I hearing correctly that we would have to pay out that department head for three or four years because they have a so-called term? Would that be the case? Well, you wouldn't have to automatically, but I believe that a department head who has a five-year term that's terminable with cause uh, would have a right to file a claim against the city for compensation based on that five-year term if they were terminated without cause. And, you know, they'd make a claim, and if we didn't uh, agree to it, I think they could sue, and I don't see why they wouldn't uh, have a pretty good chance of prevailing. Thank you. I mean, I think that's another thing that we should look at then is that rather than give her the five-year term, then let's consider eliminating the five-year terms for the rest of the department heads, and then everybody's at will, and then if we need to restructure the table of organization, our hands aren't tied. So at this point in time, the way the motion is worded to get the opinion from the Attorney General, uh, I too will vote against it because I guess I'd rather see a declaratory judgment, something that's going to hold water and um, bring this issue to a close. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Alderman Susha. As a point of clarification, the Alderman Rec, you did not say he wanted a declaratory judgment. You wanted an opinion before even going to ask whether she would be willing. So that was the issue. The one thing you need to remind, remember is that if an attorney general opinion is going to be basically pretty much cost neutral, it's not going to cost us anything. And it may resolve the issue. If we go and file a lawsuit, a declaratory judgment, going to involve cause, and it may involve a lot more time as the parties stretch it out. Uh, it's just something for you to weigh uh, on those options. Alderman, uh, Vice President Burke. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess I have a couple of questions. It would be reasonable to believe that if an individual uh, was, for example, uh, asked for a declaratory judgment, that individual could also uh, ask to have the library board named as co-defendants. Would that be a reasonable, uh, in which case we are in a situation where the taxpayers are buying the bullets for the library board and the council to shoot at each other. And I just, I just think uh, uh, that for me is just untenable, uh, as if you would, as the first move we make. Uh, I think Alderman Stefan and Alderman Radke had indicated uh, displeasure with uh, uh, asking directly for the library board and the library director to reconsider the contract. But they were in agreement with the second part of the uh, question, which really asked that we pursue uh, the uh, opinion with the library board of the uh, attorney general. Uh, therefore, I think I would ask that we split the question, because it seems like we're arguing, uh, we're speaking to, to a bifurcated uh, 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 question here. One. Uh, asking the library director and the library board to reconsider, and the second part of that being asking uh, the library board to join with us in uh, seeking an attorney general's uh, uh, opinion. So I'm asking to split the question, please. Is that a motion to divide the question? Right. A second to that motion? Second. <coughs> Just what did I vote? <laughs> Just a second. Who did the second? I'm sorry. Thanks. Just an eyeball. Just an eyeball. Would be fine. Just an eyeball. Just split the motion. Okay. We're going to split the question. If everybody understands, instead of in one motion, as President Groff stated, and it was second by Alwin Serta, that we ask the library director to either to consider either rescinding or not. And if she would not, then the city attorney would be uh, directed to solicit an <coughs> attorney general opinion. The way it's going to work now is. We're going to vote to divide it so that one motion will be to ask the library director, and a separate motion will be, a separate action will be to ask for an attorney general opinion. Everybody clear on that? Okay, the motion is to divide the question. Okay? Although, yes, on, the, on that question, because I've got lights all over the place here, and I st we still haven't gotten done. Just a 
question? Oh, excuse Mr. me, Manning. Alderman Manning. Yeah. I believe that uh, the um, second part of that then would be that we and the library board together through the DPI approach, Attorney General, correct? I think that's would what you? I would like to see. I would like to approach the library board tomorrow and ask them to join in seeking the opinion. If, Thank you. if they choose not to, <clears throat> then we'd go ahead and request it on our own, I guess. But I think it would be a stronger request if it came in jointly. Thank you. I think it would be a better motion if we just did it at one. But let's go. <laughs> regarding the motion. Yes, regarding the motion, uh, President Graff. Thank you. Um, I'd rather have it as one motion also. Um, but I will, will support splitting it if, if it means it's getting passed. But one thing I want to say, when we started off this conversation by saying we thought there was a lack of communication and so forth. And now we're going back to basically running the same thing um, with, we, we have to rule or, or govern by conflict. Why can't we govern by communication? Absolutely. And um, that's why I think we should do this as, as one motion, but I will support it uh, so that we get over this. Okay. On the division, <clears throat> Alderman Susha. I still have, lots of, Alderman, just be mindful. I, I see your lights. And I'll get to them. There's a lots of lights popping up, and they pop up in the order that you activate your button. So, but this is just on the division, Alderman Susha. Right. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to throw this on the table before we vote on this because I think that perhaps another option would be is to keep this together, and rather than split it apart, is to actually add to it. Okay. First, we ask them tomorrow, being that they're meeting tomorrow. This is just 24 hours later. Ask them what they're thinking. Then you could get the uh, opinion from the Attorney General's office. But if we could amend it, if this motion fails, what we could add is that then we would seek a declaratory judgment if they don't rescind the contract after the Attorney General's uh, opinion comes in. Because otherwise, if the Attorney General's opinion comes in and we're still faced with the same situation, then we're going to be coming back here again. Well, now or what are we going to do? And then obviously we're going to take them to court. So I would say we should not split the <coughs> question. What we should do is, if the motion fails, we should amend it to add the third step. I'm going to ask for a roll call, because <clears throat> normally I would ask for an aye vote, but I want a roll call on this. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. This is just to our division of the question. I vote would be to divide it into two. Nay vote would keep it in one. OK. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. No. Eberg. Aye. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Graf. Excuse me? Thank you. Kittleson? No. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. I'm sorry, Jeff? No. Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Seven eyes, nine no's. Motion fails. We're back to the original motion, and that motion was to ask a request, make, make a request to Sharon Winkle to consider rescinding by mutual consent her, uh, those stipulations that are in conflict or in question or the entire contract. The answer being no, then we will pursue a, an opinion from the Attorney General. Everybody clear on that? Please call the roll. Sorry. Oh, and Stefan, I'm sorry. On that? Okay, we're back to that. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm thinking about offering an amendment. I think, you know, I can see the logic of going and asking, but like I said, I'm just not comfortable with why would she give that up when we're not giving her anything. I think the better thing would go to say, how about if we go to her and the library board and say, we'll agree that we'll abide by whatever the Attorney General says. That way, she has a chance, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of, ludicrous to me to think we're going to go ask the Attorney General and then we're going to already tell them now today if we don't like what the Attorney General says we're going to move towards declaratory you know I mean if we're going to live with it we're going to live with it if we're not going to do why go to the Attorney General if we're going to only agree with their decision if we like it you know I think maybe by going and asking the library board and the director we're going to submit to the Attorney General for and we'll all three agree to abide by that and, and we can do that without Making that an emotion. I mean, that's just when the attorney, if the attorney general opinion would be solicited, it comes in, we could tear ourselves, we're done with it. We believe it. We're not. But I guess I'm saying, I'm sorry, Your Honor. If, if we all agree ahead of time, I mean, still, I suppose you're not 
mm -hmm. held to that, but you know, we're all, the library board people are respectful, you know, I respect for the, for the director also. I don't think anybody would, you know, change their word on that. Right, thank you, Alderman Stefan. On the same issue, there, some of the lights were blinking. I have Alderman Tagali. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what I'd like to know if we have no control over the library board, why then would we have to pay their attorney if we took this to a lawsuit? If we have no control over them anyway, then why should the city be paying for their attorney? Uh, because they're a city entity and they should be entitled to representation. Just yeah, but we don't have any control over them. I mean, they, they, the library board kind of does what they, they want to do. I mean, they did this contract, et cetera, without the city knowing about it. So I'm not understanding then why we would have, as taxpayers, the taxpayers would have to pay for their attorney. Because they're a city entity. They're, they're an instrument, instrumentality of the city. Um, and you do have some control over them. You got the purse strings uh, primarily. Uh, but I think they're, they'd be entitled to it, to uh, representation. Typically, that representation is provided by my office, but where there's a conflict, I, I couldn't ethically represent both sides, so they'd be entitled to representation. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Alderman Sush is next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to try to attempt to amend the motion um, and add to it if the contract is not rescinded after the attorney general decision, we authorize and direct the city attorney to take the necessary steps to obtain a declaratory judgment on whether this contract is legal. Second. Second. Does that the original motion? Changes completely? Um, I don't I guess you're the chair, you can make a ruling on that. I don't know if it does or not. You know, the, the problem with that is if the attorney general gives the opinion that the library board has that authority, um, I'd like to come back to you and say, you know, this is what the Attorney General has to say. What do you want to do from here? Do you, you know, I, I don't know that it would be warranted to, to go to court beyond that, but that would be your decision. And, um, you know, you could make that call now, but I, I'd be inclined to want to wait until you got the opinion from the Attorney General. <laughs> I don't, Alderman Susha, I don't want to get into a practice of changing the, the, the character of the motion. We've, we've had instances before where we did, and the original motion was to ask the library director, and if the answer is no, to get an opinion. Your, your amendment changes it from ask, and if the library <coughs> director says no, we go to a completely uh, cost bearing <coughs> So it changes the motion. I would rather us have that, and if that fails, then you can make your motion. So, so back on, on that, on the original motion. Mayor, can I just ask Alderman Stephan, did you make a motion? Because I have you as making a motion to amend. No, I, 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 so that's nothing, that was just discussion? Thank you. On, on, on the first question, again, I've got lights popping up. We're, we're discussing the issue under discussion of asking Sharon Winkle to consider by mutual consent to be said, and if that answer is no, then we solicit an opinion. That's where we're at now. That's under discussion. All the remaining. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, I would prefer, as opposed to formally as counsel, asking her to rescind. That can be communicated personally. And I think a personal issue like that is better communicated in that way. Private conversation. This is an alternative that you could consider. Uh, the board's perception uh, is an issue as well. Uh, sitting on the board, uh, I think the board would prefer simply, here's something the council wants us to do collegially. We go together to the attorney general through the DPI. In that conversation, if Ms. Winkle would offer an alternative, that would be seen as something they could consider and well, well discuss. Uh, but, but if it comes in a formal overture from this council, it bears much more weight and can feel like um, further pressure um, and undo. So I prefer the softer approach, the mutuality of dialogue, which has been mentioned is, is essential, and let them deal with that as they choose if she would make such an overture, and if not, we have something productive to do together to resolve this, and that's what I'm concerned about. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Serta. 
Thank you, Your Honor. The issue of parity has come up over and over to get, again tonight, and it, it is very important, but I believe that we're putting the cart before the horse. Um, it, it's important, but yet, according to um, the opinion that we received, it's just not feasible at this time. But it doesn't mean that even asking if Sharon Winkle is willing to consider to rescind her, her provisions, that we collectively, as a council and a library board, can pursue to see if that's something that we can do in the future together. That doesn't stop us, it doesn't hinder us. It's just not feasible at this time. And it might be a, a good way to maybe start building some bridges together and working together. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Kittleton. Thank you, Your Honor. I was just going to uh, agree with what Alderman Stefan had said, that we ask uh, her to rescind and then get the opinion from the Attorney General, and then we abide by that. However, with the conversation, I, I think what Attorney McLean said is what is, is the way I am thinking that uh, in the direction that I'd like to go, is just ask her to rescind and then put it to the board uh, with the Common Council to the Attorney General and then maybe abide by what he says as the expert that we come back and take it from there. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Alderman Retti. Thank you, Your Honor. I think this Council should go forward and ask for the Attorney General's opinion without involving the Library Board. The Library Board has never once come up here when we've dealt with this. Sharon Winkle made a statement, ran out that back door, never talked to anybody about any of this. Enough. Communication has never been there. We talked about resignations on that board. None of those people came here. Not a one of them, not, not one to defend themselves. So here we are once again tonight talking about this. I think we as a council need to go forward, ask the Attorney General for an opinion. I'm sick and tired of hearing the big bad councils coming after us again from the library board people. And I've heard that out of library board members. I don't appreciate that. I appreciate the fact we've got a job to do for the citizens, and I don't want to see the Mead Public Library drag through any more than it already has been. If these people truly cared about this Mead Public Library, we wouldn't be sitting here tonight debating this issue. It would have been done a long time ago because it would have never happened if they really truly cared. But they don't evidently do that because we're here tonight debating something that should have never happened to begin with. Thank you. All the lights are out. Oh, no, one more. Alderman Stefan. <laughs> I, I guess I'm really offended by that statement. I mean, I think these people do care. You know, I think they did have good intentions. Uh, maybe, you know, they didn't see the big picture. But, you know, I take great offense to the fact that they didn't care about the library. And, uh, you know, I just think that's a terrible statement. And I don't think, you know, I've seen a lot of us at library board meetings, you know. It's one thing to say they should come and talk to us, but we can go talk to them also. Thank you. Please do. I will. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor of calling the question say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please call the roll. Do we need a reminder what we're voting on? Yes? Okay. What we are voting on is a motion proposed by Alderman Graff, second by Alderman Serta, to ask Sharon Winkle, the library director, to consider rescinding either of those portions or in con or that are of concern now or the entire contract by mutual agreement. If the answer is no, then that we, we ask the city attorney to, to solicit an attorney general's opinion on the issue. Is everybody clear? That's the question. <coughs> Your Honor, I, I would like to clarify that I'd like to request the library board to join in on that request. Yes, that, that was, I, I missed that, apologize. Okay, are we okay? Everybody all right? Ready to vote? Please call the roll. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, no. Meyer, Aye. I'm sorry, Aye. <laughs> Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. excuse Aye. me, Sigali, Stefan, no. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. 14 eyes, two no's. Motion passes. Do we, uh, do we need to file this RO? There's a motion and a second to file RO 277 that we just discussed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Second. There's a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. Aye.